conception of the one who became the mother of the eternal word. Make us worthy to offer you acceptable praises now and forever. Amen. Peace be with the church and her children. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Bless the Lord, all you works of the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. All you waters above the heavens, bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. Do in rain bless the Lord. Praise and exalt him above all forever. God bless you, Rita. May we be worthy to praise, confess, and glorify the Father who chose Mary from the beginning of time as his fairest daughter, the Son whom it pleased to make her his mother, the Holy Spirit who sanctified her at creation to be his bride. To him our due glory and honor, now and forever. Amen. O God, our Father, we praise you for the unspeakable love you showed for us in the incarnation of your Son. But this day we give thanks in a special manner for the grace you visited upon our poor race by choosing Mary. You prepared her with your choicest blessings to be our pride and our boast. Her holiness is beyond that of any creature, for all were touched by the original fall but Mary. God chose her and protected her from Satan's gaze. He crowned her queen of all creation, and among mortals she alone has been so exalted. Therefore, today all creation joins to sing her praises and to worship the one who filled her with all his gifts. To him be glory forever. Amen. When the time was right, yes, continue.
on this feast of the Holy Virgin Mary. As you accepted her purity with the fervor of her love, make us acceptable for your holy purpose. The more we resemble her, the more your name shall be blessed and honored now and forever. promise made from the beginning, and God placed enmity between the devil and the woman, the seed. of St. Paul unto the Hebrews, Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish and her children forever. If then, perfection had come through the Levitical priesthood, on the basis of which the people received the law, then what need would there be for another priest to arise according to the order of Melchizedek and not reckoned according to the order of Aaron? When there is a change of priesthood, there is necessarily a change of law as well. Now he of whom these things were said belonged to a different tribe, of which no member ever officiated at the altar. It is clear that our Lord arose from Judah, and in regard to that tribe, Moses 
said nothing about priests. It is even more obvious if another priest is raised up after the likeness of Melchizedek, who has become so, not by the law expressed in commandment concerning physical descent, but by the power of life that cannot be destroyed. For it testified, you are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Praise be to God always. Savior announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. From the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Luke, who proclaimed life unto the world, let us listen to the proclamation of life and salvation for our souls. The evangelist Luke writes, And while Jesus was speaking, a woman from the crowd called out and she said to him, Blessed is the womb that carried you and the breast at which you nursed. And he replied, Rather blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. And while still more people gathered in the crowd, he said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given it except the sign of Jonah. And just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so shall the Son of Man be to this generation. At the judgment, the Queen of the South will rise with the men of this generation, and she will condemn them, because she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And there is yet something greater than Solomon here. At the judgment, the men of Nineveh shall arise with this generation and condemn it. Because at the preaching of Jonah, they repented. And yet, there is something greater than Jonah here. This is the truth, peace be with you. Not by legal requirement or physical descent, but by indestructible life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. 
This is chapter 7, the letter to the Hebrews. And St. Paul is dealing with the mystery of Melchizedek in order to argue with these young converts of Christianity to hold firm and why the new covenant is much greater than the old covenant and where the power truly comes from. Using all of chapter 7 is on Melchizedek. Melchizedek, the very unusual figure who appears in the story of Abraham and then disappears. We have nothing before. He appears for one moment. And St. Paul uses that image because, of course, the Psalms. You are a priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The Psalms announce this. Melchizedek is in the book of Genesis. The Psalms are centuries later, this whole episode. So St. Paul is bringing these two scriptural texts together and saying, look, we know that this order of Melchizedek seems to, as it was interpreted already, as being a messianic text. And so he links Melchizedek in the Psalm to the story of the historical context within Melchizedek within Genesis. And Melchizedek, he says, without father or mother, because of course we're not given a genealogy. If, you, if you've ever read the Old Testament, if you recognize anything, it's genealogies. It's names and names and son of, son of, son of, son of, and fathers and who they are. Melchizedek just appears. And his name itself, Melech Shedek. Shedek, Shedek means, sometimes they translate it as mercy, sometimes they translate it as love. Both are correct and both are incorrect. Shedek is a very distinct term in the Hebrew which is a love of a higher for the lower. Shedek would be the love of parents for their children. They have something to give your children. Your children have very little to give to you. You love those mushy dandelions that they bring in from the backyard because they're given with love, but they don't really have anything to give you. But love is what you want. And so Shedek is the sense of the higher to the lower to raise it up. And then he's the king of Shedek. So he has a very mysterious name. We're told he's the priest of the Most High. He's king of Salem, of Shalom. He's king of peace. And all of this is brought together to appear to offer a sacrifice of bread and wine at the time of Abraham's victory. And then the psalm centuries later say, you are a priest according to the order of Melchizedek, like Melchizedek. So St. Paul is saying, look, this is Jesus of Nazareth. This is the Christ. This is the one who's from the tribe of Judah, of whom Moses never spoke. But always remembering during these weeks of the announcements that the story of Abraham is hundreds of years, centuries before Moses. Moses doesn't talk about priests. They're only in the tribe of Levi, which was his tribe. And St. Paul says it doesn't matter. Because Melchizedek, the figure, already predates by hundreds of years. And it's announced in the Psalms. And so he brings all of these texts together to say, therefore, the priesthood, the new priesthood, the change from the old to the new is already announced in the scriptures. And this is fulfilled in this person, Jesus of Nazareth, from the tribe of Judah. This reality, because then it comes a question, he says, not of legal requirement, not of physical descent, because of course, the priest of Aaron of the Old Testament, they are all, it is hereditary. You could not be a priest unless your father had been a priest. You go father to son, father to son, father to son, and they're all sons of Aaron. In fact, to this day, we know that they have kept this law so well that out of all the genetic testing done, these family of Kohenim, so when you see the Jewish name Kohen, Kohen means priest. These families are claiming to be priestly families of descendants of Aaron. They have the most uniform genetic code of any other related peoples that we have records of. So clearly for most of their history, they have been doing what they're supposed to do, which is marry Levitical women and continue it within the tribe and specifically within the family and that physical descent that St. Paul talks about in chapter seven. But after having elaborated on that, St. Paul says none of that matters because it is the promise made at the time of Abraham and that priesthood, which is new, and he says that when there's a change of priesthood, from Aaron to Melchizedek, then doubtless there is a change of law. There is a change of direction. 
But ultimately, we go beyond that question. He says, not of legal descent, not of legal requirement, not of physical descent, but by the fact of indestructible life. And then you say, okay, well, what is this supposed to mean? Well, St. Paul has two things here to mention. One is the question of the resurrection, our Lord's victory, the sacrifice upon Calvary. But we can also ask what the fundamental question is, what is priesthood? I mean, priesthood, the word itself just means the state of being an elder. But what is priesthood? What is to make sacred? What is this aspect except to join God and man, to join humanity and divinity together? This reality in Christianity, in the old law, in the new law, in paganism, it's always the idea of joining the people on earth to whatever divinity is above. And so the ceremonies that are brought about, that is priesthood in its fundamental sense. But we move to the next stage then and say, well then this indestructible life is not just resurrection, but is the very fact that this is God made man. Christ is both totally God, completely God and completely man. One person, two natures, God incarnate. This is the whole meaning of the announcements that we're celebrating over these five or six weeks. But that whole vision, of course, Christ himself is priesthood existentially, if you want. He is God and man joined in the single person of the divine word. And so he is by very metaphysical definition, priesthood. He is that reality joining. And that is why when we are baptized and engrafted into the body of Christ, we are made participants in union with that divinity. We find our salvation. And that's why there is no salvation outside of Christ because Christ is the reality that joins man and God together, this reality. So now we take it to the next step. This has been, we've seen over these weeks, of the mystery. The mystery revealed that has been from before the creation of the world. St. Paul comes back to it again and again. We have it again this Sunday. Christ is the mystery. It's not just the plan of salvation like it's an idea, but the very mystery itself hidden, the very reality of that union between humanity and God is Christ himself. So when you step back that this is from before the creation of the world, this is an eternal choice that God has made, that he would become man in his creation. This is a very Eastern vision. The Franciscans pick it up in the Middle Ages. But this idea that God from all eternity chose to himself to come amongst his creation, to be man among them. Now after the fall of original sin, of course, of Adam and Eve, then his coming will also have a redemptive aspect of repair. But his intention had always been to enter into the world. This is the vision of the Eastern Fathers, because then creation would reach its full summit of responding love for love, God responding in its fullness, that when God himself would come among his creatures and become, in that sense, creature by becoming man, that man would be able to respond to God in prayer and in adoration in a fitting and just way that was adequate. The rest of us, we say our prayers, they're not just, they're not adequate, they always fall short. They're crushed to dandelions. We can't give back to God what is truly due to God. But that's all right. You don't think that your three-year-old was crummy because you just got smashed dandelions. You love the return of love, but you wouldn't say that it's an adequate gift for everything that has been given to you. And that is why God entering among his creatures, it not only will it be mankind's crushed dandelions, but it is all subsumed into the God-made man who responds to divinity, son to father, in an adequate and just way by taking all of the smashed dandelions, elevating them into his adoration and transforming them in pure and perfect justice before God the Creator. That's a kind of a large vision. It's cosmic. It is the entire act of creation of the universe. But of course, when you understand that, then you have to understand if God's eternal choice has to become man among us, 
And he chose that he would become man by the same process that other men enter this world through conception and birth and growth. Then you see how Mary of Nazareth is also part of that eternal decision. From all eternity, Mary is joined in that intimate vision of God himself being made incarnate. So the Blessed Virgin Mary stands as a completely unique creature amongst all the creatures who are also willed from all eternity. But of all the creatures that are made that God loves into existence, this one is intimately connected with the very reality of his choice to enter into creation, to share in that good, to participate in that good, and to raise it in an adequate justice, joining God in man in the very fact of being God made man. And Mary then becomes this intimate connection. She embraces, in a sense, all of redemption. This is why she's the mediatrix of all graces. She is co-redemptrix. She is the new Eve. All the things that we could elaborate on. It is that fundamental vision, which is why when you first hear this text, why are we reading from chapter 7 of Hebrews for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception? But when we understand who the new priest is and what priesthood truly is, then Mary becomes, not because anything intrinsic to her, but because of God's free choice. God didn't have to make any of us. God didn't have to choose to become incarnate among us. God didn't have to make Mary, but he did. And this is the order of creation. And because this is the order of creation, the reality of Mary, St. Thomas Aquinas says she touches the edge of infinitude, of infinity, because of how she's related. She is completely a creature. She is drawn from nothing like all of us, but she is lavished with the gifts of making her not just the dwelling of the priest, of the eternal priest, but making her an adequate and as fitting as a creature could be to be the dwelling place of God incarnate, she is that reality. This is what we celebrate in the, in the Immaculate Conception. So it takes place obviously years before the incarnation, but it is one vision, one optic, one choice, one mystery, one incarnation of which Mary herself entering into this world and it's part of the beautiful thing we have in our Fenkito and in Ramsho last night, the number of times that Joachim and Anne are referred to because of this reality of the child that is given to them in conception in their old age, that she is part of that mystery of the transition from an old law to the new law, from the incarnation of a priesthood, not by linear descent, because she's of the tribe of Judah. Our Lord is of the tribe of Judah through her and through Joseph. But that priesthood is the order of Melchizedek, the mysterious one who is part of the promise in the story of Abraham. So again, you go back and read that, those chapters between chapter 12 and chapter 25 in the book of Genesis, and you'll find Melchizedek there, and you'll see what St. Paul is referring to. But this is what we celebrate, cosmic renewal, the renewal of the universe, because a woman, a creature drawn from nothing, was chosen from all eternity to be part of this path of adoration and of redemption. And for us in application, obviously we can't imitate. We cannot replicate or imitate that fact. But what we can imitate is newness. There is a reality always on this idea of renewal. We spend so much of our time walking backward in our lives. We did this, we did that, we regret this, we regret that. And then for many of these things, we should be contrite, not regretting, but contrite. Upset that I do this, or I've done that, or you know, those previous six marriages I had really didn't went too good, that type of a thing. And I can, I can spend my days regretting those choices of decades over decades. Or I can understand that in the mystery of Mary and the Immaculate Conception, everything is renewal. And we stand always, each day, in threshold by God's grace to make things new again. 
And when we choose that, that is our conversion. The repentance part, that's the joyful sorrow we've talked about over these last weeks. The joyful sorrow, fine. I know where I'm at is not where I really should be. But that is the renewal. In the hands of the mother of God, I desire to make all things new in my life. I can change these things. God's grace allows me to do these things. And when we understand that, then we have found the true priesthood that joins God and man, that joins us individually in the body of Christ to the hidden Father. And when we've done that, we've found hope. And charity can flourish. And so on this day of this universal and cosmic feast of the Immaculate, of creation of the, of the Immaculate Virgin Mary, May her prayers and her intercessions be a rampart and a strengthening to us always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only God the Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God and God. God not pain, consubstantial of the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the God and the Virgin Mary and the Amen. For our sake he was crucified and conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, who will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. children have brought to you, out of their love for you and for your holy name. Shower your spiritual blessings upon them, and in place of their earthly gifts, grant them life and your imperishable kingdom. Amen. As we remember our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ and his plan of salvation for us, we recall upon this offering all those who have pleased God from Adam to this day. 
especially Mary, the Blessed Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, the Chosen One, our Holy Father, Saint Mary, and Saint Jude. Remember, O God, the children of the Holy Church, our fathers and mothers and our brothers and sisters, both the living and the departed, especially those for whom this sacrifice is offered for the intentions of all the members of this parish. Remember also all those who share with us today in this offering. of St. John Chrysostom on page 876. 876. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Lord God and Father, holy and glorious is your name. You deliver those who love you from all that is contrary to your will. May we who have remained in your divine love be made worthy to give one another the greeting of peace with a holy kiss. May we always speak words of peace, think of peace, and work for peace. Through the grace of your only Son and his love for all people, we raise glory to you and to your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. to you, O holy altar of God. Peace to the holy mysteries placed upon you. Peace to you, O server of the Holy Spirit. Let us give the greeting of peace to our neighbor with love and faith that are pleasing to God. Peace. O Lord, on high, hidden from all creation, you are peace, reconciling those who are enemies. You are forgiveness to those who sin, and you are comfort to those who are sorrowful. Open the door of your mercy to our petitions, and in the abundance of your grace, accept our prayers. Make us children and heirs of your kingdom, through the grace of your only Son, and his love for all people, and through your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. O Lord, you are adored by all. Angels bless you, humanity exalts you, and all creation glorifies you. Look upon your children who call out to you with purity and holiness. May we offer and accept you an, an acceptable sacrifice that we may raise glory to you, to your only Son, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The love of God the Father and the grace of the only begotten Son 
on the communion and indwelling of the Holy Spirit be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. And with your spirit. Let us lift up our thoughts, our minds, and our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord with reverence and worship him with humility. Truly it is right and just to thank, adore, glorify, and bless the majesty of the one consubstantial Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a majesty that does not need our glory or become greater with our thanks. O Lord, those who sing your praises are countless, and they cry out with angelic voices, and with sweet melodies proclaiming. Glory to you, O God, the Heavenly Father, for you have exalted our weak human nature. In your mercy you sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. He dawned from the Holy Virgin like a ray of light from a bright cloud. He took the form of a slave, yet truly he is the Son of your majesty. He willingly became man to make us divine. He was born from a woman's womb that we may be born again from a spiritual womb. He became our brother so that through through his grace we may become your children and heirs. He, he took us from being slaves and made us your children. He promised us a share in the reward that allows us to call you Abba. He cleansed us from our sins with his precious blood that he poured out for us. For he is your only son. And Fahro diela, dach lo fai kun wach lov sagie, meta kseu meti hab, usonya habe wa haye dan kaila malamin. Kanna halko so dum sich wo men hamro men mayo. Bare ho kodesh. O ya bel talmi da karo mara. Sabish tawa mehne kul khun. Ho no deni ta. Dima ho dila dia tiki khadato. Dach lo fai kun wach lav sagiyem me te shadu me te hab khusun yon khabe wa khaye dan qalam alamin Do this in memory of me each time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you remember my death until I come again. that you willingly emptied yourself of your divine glory, who can explain your miraculous birth from a virgin, who can repay you for your saving passion which you freely endured, 
who can praise your plan of salvation for us. We can only ask of you, O lover of all people, that this sacrifice which we have offered be accepted on your altar in heaven, the dwelling place of your hidden divinity, in the company of all the angels and saints. Through this sacrifice, may we be worthy of the forgiveness of our sins. When you come to judge the living and the dead, do not pass judgment upon us, nor deny us, saying, I do not know you. On that glorious and fearful day, do not separate us from you, nor cast us out of your paradise to a place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. Rather, because of your holy name by which we have been called, look with mercy upon us. In your compassion you have made us worthy of the gift of your forgiving body and blood. So make us worthy to be one with you in holiness, as you are one with your Father. For this your church implores you, and through you and with you implores your Father, saying, As we, your sinful children, receive your graces, we thank you for them and because of them. We praise you, Lord, for your power and your Spirit to sanctify this altar, to sanctify these offerings, and to rest upon this bread and wine, then we become the one body and blood of your only Son. Annin Mario, Annin Mario. Annin morio, nite moro rofo chayu kodisho, ona chenda lanyu alu korbono ono. For us, the pledge of the life to come, a body that grants us the ever joys of heaven, a body that renews our souls and bodies, a body that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. And that the mixture in this chalice, the blood of Christ our God, be a blood that gives new life to those who receive it, a blood that guides us to the safe harbors and the dwellings of light, a blood that renews our souls and bodies, a blood that purifies us of all sin for eternal life. Amen. O Lord, in your great mercy, when this body and blood is mingled with our bodies and souls, grant that it may be for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for the everlasting lasting joy and eternal life with all your saints. Amen. We offer you, Lord God, this pure and holy offering for your holy Catholic and apostolic church which you have redeemed. Gather her children into unity, love, and faith, and guide them in peace and security. We offer it for the pure bishops of the true faith, Francis, the Pope of Rome, Bishara Peter, our Patriarch of Antioch, Gregory John, our Bishop, the Venerable Priests, the Chaste Deacons, the Pure Subdeacons, and all the Orders of the Church. Teach them the word of truth, so that they may spread it faithfully with justice and holiness. May they care for the flock that you have entrusted to them. Give them the proper means to accomplish your will and grant them a long life. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the dejected, for orphans and widows, the sick and the distressed, and for those tempted by evil spirits, be the God and the record of their lives. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord. Remember the Holy Fathers, Prophets, Apostles, Preachers, Evangelists, Martyrs, and Confessors, 
especially the holy, glorious, and blessed ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. John the Baptist, the messenger and forerunner, who witnessed the betrothal of your holy church to your son, glorious St. Stephen, the archdeacon, and first martyr, and all who pleased you and professed your name. We pray to you, O Lord. For all the faithful departed who have gone to you from this altar and from every place throughout the world, grant them rest in your heavenly dwellings with all your saints, and in your mercy forgive our sins and theirs. not deprive us of your mercy, but keep us in the palm of your hand, lest we fall and go astray, so that we may walk on your paths, follow your ways, and do your will. Forgive us and our departed, and pardon all sins and transgressions, hidden and seen, committed with or without full knowledge. Make us worthy of a faithful Christian death that is pleasing to you, and join us to your righteous ones and to those who have done your will that in us and in all things your blessed name may be glorified with the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and of your living Holy Spirit, now and forever. sent us your only Son, who is the radiance of your eternity. And he accomplished his plan of salvation for us, that we may come to you. May we call upon you with the prayer that he taught his holy disciples, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of the Lord. Yes, O merciful Lord, we ask for your compassion. By your grace, make us worthy that your glorious name may be made holy in us that your kingdom come to assist us in our weakness, and that your will dwell within us. Deliver us from all difficult temptations. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours with your only Son and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. 
Shlomo Elokorichonna. O Lord, you are good and the lover of all people. Look upon those who bow their heads before your majesty and bless them with every spiritual blessing. Do not turn us away when we approach your divine and holy gifts, and let us not be guilty of unworthily receiving the body and blood of your only Son. Rather, make us worthy to share in your holy and life-giving mysteries with purity, that we may raise glory and thanks to you, to your only Son, and to your good and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. The grace of the Most Holy Trinity, eternal and consubstantial, be with you, my brothers and sisters, forever. Holy gifts for the holy with perfection, purity, and sanctity. One holy Father, one holy Son, one holy Spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is one in heaven and upon earth. To him be glory forever. Make us worthy, O Lord God, that our bodies may be sanctified by your holy love and our souls purified by your forgiving blood. May our communion be for the forgiveness of our sins and for a new life. O Lord our God, to you be glory, Christ.
Again and again, we thank you, O Lord, and we raise glory to you for giving us your body to eat and your living blood to drink. O lover of all people, have mercy on us.
Lord Jesus, you have made us worthy to share in your holy body and in the cup of salvation. How can we repay you for these, your gifts and graces, and for your goodness? As you have called us to approach this life-giving banquet, make us worthy, so that your body may be mingled with our bodies and your blood with our souls, for the pardon of faults, the forgiveness of sins, and for eternal life. You are blessed, and your kingdom is holy. And we raise glory to you, to your Father, and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. Shlomo el-Kurchunna. O God the Father, we bow before you and we entrust ourselves to your care. We ask you, imploring your mercy, to rest your right hand full of blessings upon us. Assist us, protect us, bless us, and sanctify us by the cross of your only Son. We glorify and honor you, your only Son, and your Holy Spirit, now and forever. And so for the first meeting of the Legion will be in the St. Jude Chapel. Immediately after Mass, I'll gather in the things we have to do with the chalice, and then we'll begin the Syriac vision of the Mother of God for those who are interested, but we'll meet in the St. Jude's Chapel um, immediately after Mass. Go in peace, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the nourishments and blessings you have received from the forgiving altar of the Lord. May the blessing of the Most Holy Trinity accompany you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the one God, to whom be glory forever. Amen. Amen. Immaculate Mary. 